Hey everyone, this is part 2 to the Code Lyoko retrospective, so if you missed part 1, it's pinned in the comments below. And before we get into this, I just want to take a quick look at the community post I made last week about the Code Lyoko theme song, because out of the thousand votes, 84% of you voted correctly that the theme song was fire, and I actually am happy to say that only 1% of you voted that it was trash, which honestly I thought was going to be a lot higher, but you know. I guess this is a vote consisting of people that still think about Code Lyoko in 2024, so there's obviously a little bit of bias in that regard. But yeah, I just wanted to quickly point that out, so thank you all for voting, and I appreciate it. Let's jump into the video. In episode 14, today is Aelita's birthday, so the crew uses their lunch hour to make a birthday surprise for her. We learn it's been a year since they've met Aelita, although we don't exactly know why or how still. Sissy spies on the group and she sees them enter the sewer as they race to the elevator, only to be confronted by Sissy, who demands to know what exactly is going on. On here. The power's cut off inside the factory by Xana, and we see Ulrich hurt his arm when Xana crashes the elevator they're in. Yumi escapes out the top of the elevator to go get help, and we see Sissy helps bandage up Ulrich's arm as they share a sweet moment that kind of shows that she's really not their enemy, and she's like half in the friend group, half out. The elevator begins to fill with water, and Ulrich promises her if they make it out of here alive, he promises he'll be nicer to her. Odd and Yumi go into Lyoko, and they both get taken out pretty quickly, leaving Aelita alone but Aelita actually holds her own here more than any other episode. She showcases this power she has to move rocks, and she dodges this big crab robot, front flipping under it, and entering the tower, allowing them to return to the past just before Ulrich and Sissy drown, which is pretty dark since they're already unconscious from drowning here. Like, that's pretty terrible, especially if Ulrich remembers this experience when he goes back to the past. The episode ends with the Lyoko crew showing Aelita a cake that they just end up eating in front of her. And yeah, that's real nice, just teaser. So so hey, anyone whose birthday today, here's your cake. You're welcome. Episode 15 starts with Ulrich comforting Yumi because her parents seem to be in the process of a divorce. Ulrich asks Sissy if Yumi can get a part in the school play so her parents will show up to the performance. Like, yeah, that'll solve all their issues. Ulrich plays the role of Romeo in order to get Yumi a role in the play, and Herb is upset Ulrich took his role as Romeo since he actually wants to be closer with Sissy. I can't believe you stole my part. It isn't my fault, Herb, I swear. I wonder why I don't just slug you. Fear, maybe? You know what? Ulrich's kind of a boss. I'll admit it. Xana's plan here is to use gas again, which has already happened, but this time it's of the laughing variety. Which does thematically play into the episode a little, with the group trying to cheer Yumi up as her parents are in a rough patch in their relationship. Meanwhile in Lyoko, Odd has been solo escorting Aelita, and I swear Odd is here twice as much as anyone else. This is what Odd lives for. They get into a labyrinth, and Odd has a vision of where the tower is, allowing them to go back to the past. However, However, they return with new knowledge that the key to getting Yumi's parents back together is by making them laugh. So they deliberately make the play kind of goofy with Yumi and Ulrich hiding behind a bush that gets raised up to reveal them, crashing the play but getting a big laugh. And to Sissy's credit, she really did try with the play and is really passionate about it, which I can respect. Like, you can totally see a character like Sissy playing the role of Juliet because of nepotism or her alleged popularity, but she really takes it seriously. In episode 16, there's a new kid named Theo, and he's kind of like Ulrich, kind of cool and confident, and he is really good at soccer too. He gets initiated into Sissy's friend group by playing a prank and mummifying the skeleton in the science room, but this is a ploy by Nicholas and Herve to snitch on Theo and get him expelled to get him further away from Sissy. Before they can do this, Ulrich and Odd intervene by pranking the boys with a fake mummy, which is just Kiwi in a bedsheet. Later, Odd tries to leave the science room and just gets electrocuted by the door handle. There's a comment thread on YouTube for Xana's plan every episode, and it really helps put this all in perspective. Like, Plan K, possess an army of rats. Plan F, bulldoze the factory. Plan P, just straight up electrocute everyone. It's definitely one of the most simple plans, but electrically charging the school turns out to be a little more elaborate, with the classroom collapsing due to the electricity. In Lyoko, Aelita and Yumi fight these crab monsters that surround them, and Aelita uses her special ability to summon a tree she just stands on, saying she has faith Yumi will save her. And sure enough, Yumi dives in to protect Aelita, and the crab's lasers end up taking each other out. This allows Aelita to get 
to the tower and save the day. When they return to the past, Theo shows up again, and Theo walks Yumi home here, which was apparently arranged by Odd, because if Theo leaves with Yumi, he won't be around that night to play the initiation prank and risk his expulsion. Odd says this was a better solution than being forced to stay up all night, but Ulrich obviously doesn't agree. So let's move on. In episode 17, Ulrich has amnesia because he got this special xanabacteria on him. The episode plays out like a drama with Ulrich contemplating who his friends really are. Sissy tells Ulrich that they're dating and that the Lyoko group are his worst enemies, and Ulrich keeps getting conflicting flashbacks of his memories, like one that tells him he would never like someone as conceited as Sissy. Giving Ulrich amnesia is pretty interesting because it really shows even with no prior context, Ulrich wouldn't be in love with Sissy, possibly further hinting at his romance with Yumi. Ulrich finds the secret hideout and enters Lyoko along with Yumi and Odd, where Odd tries to jog Ulrich's memory by fighting with him. Aida and Yumi are stranded on this ice bridge, and Odd convinces Ulrich to help take out the enemy crabs. Despite his amnesia, Ulrich is still a pretty good fighter, possibly even more innovative than before. Like he slices the crabs' legs to knock them over before hitting their weak point, but he doesn't understand a whole lot, like why Yumi got devirtualized or why Aida just leaves. Thanks for clearing the passage. Huh? She's leaving? Uh, not exactly Total Recall. They return back to the start of the episode with the bacteria sample, and Ulrich just straight up burns it for some reason, and their teacher says she's giving Ulrich a punishment he won't forget. To her surprise, Ulrich says he sure hopes he won't forget, you know, because he had amnesia and stuff, and overall, it's a pretty decent episode. I think Ulrich's memory loss actually gave him a little more depth, showing how he truly interacts deep down with people like Sissy and his friends. Giving Ulrich memory loss in the Lyoko world is pretty funny, and feels like it would have been a better idea earlier on in the series, because as I've mentioned, we just jumped straight into the middle of the show with little context or explanation, but now, all this time later, Odd finally explains a little bit of how the Lyoko world works. Also, one of the funnier moments for me this episode is when Ulrich gets transported in, he just falls on his back because he doesn't know he gets transported in. Like, why do they spawn in 10 feet in the air? That's how you pull something. Episode 18 starts with Ulrich trying to study for a test, and is annoyed by Odd's dancing and singing. Ulrich decides to spend the night in Jeremy's room to study for the test, but doesn't get much sleep there either, since Jeremy dreams about Aelita in his sleep. Xana takes over the music and causes Odd to slip into a coma. So basically, anyone who listens to the Xana song slips into a coma, and Yumi barely escapes this because she doesn't fully put the headphones on. They confirm that this new song Odd downloaded is the cause of the virus, teaching us once and for all to not download music off the internet. I'd like to take a moment of silence for all the laptops and family computers lost to downloading music from LimeWire. Rest in peace. Xana's music even spreads to the computer room, causing Jeremy to fall, and when Ulrich gets devirtualized, he gets spawn camped by the music. Xana, I thought you were better than this. Aida makes it to the tower, and they return to the past with Ulrich studying for the exam again, and Odd is a lot less insistent about forcing Ulrich to listen to his music, when they realize it kinda sounds like a machine made it. I guess they never heard of EDM before. So going over some funny tidbits and comments from the episode, Episode, Aida says they're at the tower when they're super far away. Okay, we're at the tower. There it is. This is kind of like when your friend says they'll be on in five minutes. How can she say they're at the tower? This episode gives me a chance to show a video that's been stuck in my head all week of the Lyoko monsters all in a car together, like that meme of Goofy angrily driving from a Goofy movie. They're going far to save all that they love. Not for long. So let's move on. Episode 19 starts with Jeremy getting into an argument with Aelita, and Jeremy's really upset about this, showing the increased tension surrounding Xana's plots and Jeremy's desire to materialize Aelita. Jeremy decides to go into Lyoko to apologize to Aelita in person. Well, not in person, but you know what I mean. There's some kind of issue with the virtualization, and Jeremy gets stuck in some kind of digital limbo where he can still communicate via Aelita, but isn't seen on screen, which really upset me because I really wanted to see Jeremy in 3D. 
3D is so bad. For whatever reason, I feel like Jeremy would look way weirder than anyone else in 3D. I don't know if it's because he's like the only character with bangs covering at least part of his forehead, but I looked it up and found this fan created model by user Artistic Computer Guy, and it actually looks pretty dang good. I thought he'd kind of look like Timmy from the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, like just hideous and horrifying. Aelita, I'm replacing Yumi. Do you read me? Yes, loud and clear, Ulrich. I'm almost at the third tower. You're not even out of the second tower yet, Aelita. Stop this. Yumi goes to the principal's office when she's caught skipping gym class by Jim, and she's stuck in the principal's office with Jeremy's laptop they need to use to help save the day. Ulrich tells Sissy he needs her help to get Yumi and the laptop out of the principal's office, which she can do since she's his daughter. Sissy says the only way she'll do something that crazy is if Ulrich is more cool with her, and Ulrich bargains that he'll date Sissy for a week. Sissy says two months, and Ulrich compromises, saying one month with a down payment and just grabs her by the hip and kisses her in the courtyard, which is, uh, really forward. So this causes a little tension with Ulrich and Yumi, as he tries to convince her he only did this to save Yumi, and that he still likes her. Ulrich goes into the digital world to save Aelita, and when she gets to the tower, we see Aelita and Jeremy share a moment, which is actually really cool. Not just because Jeremy finally shares a more intimate moment with Aelita, but this is like the first time we see the 2D and 3D on the screen at the same time. This is one of the only episodes where they don't go back to the past since nothing really changes here. Xana actually didn't attack for once, which is pretty crazy, like Xana doesn't even need to do anything, these kids can endanger themselves just fine on their own. The episode ends with Jeremy and Aelita making up, and Jeremy explaining that arguing isn't something couples have to do when they're in love, as we cut to Ulrich pleading his case to Yumi, that he isn't lying to her, and he isn't in love with Sissy. Overall, a pretty decent episode, Aelita running through all the Lyoko terrains is sorta of interesting, but I'm always much more interested in the friendships and relationships of the characters, which is pretty clearly the focal point of the episode, considering Xana isn't really present here. Episode 20 starts with a robot basketball competition, and Herb creates a robot, Sissy, and I can't tell if this thing is terrifying or adorable. They get into a robot basketball competition with Kiwi 2, Jeremy's robot creation of Kiwi. The robot basketball competition is actually pretty cool, and just before Kiwi 2 can score the winning basket, Kiwi gets obliterated by a projectile from the robot, Sissy. Before Jeremy can confront Herb about his cheating, a giant robot enters the school and grabs Jeremy. Also, there's no way Ulrich throwing a basketball caused as much knockback to the robot. That thing is made of metal. Ulrich and Yumi get Herb to help them fight this giant robot, which is pretty interesting to team up with him for once. Like, they get help from Sissy on occasion, but Nicholas and Herb don't really provide much. Also, they basically blackmail Herb into building this little titanium robot, or else they'll tell Sissy he cheated during the robot basketball competition. And this invention is able to take out Xana's possessed giant robot. These robots keep getting built though, and chasing Ulrich as Yumi enters Lyoko. There's not really much I can say that's interesting of Lyoko in this episode, so this episode to me is just overall not that interesting. Like, the biggest intrigue I have with Lyoko here is how Odd has 50 life points left, but 6 of his 8 health bar circles are full. Cause if we're to assume you start with 100 health points, shouldn't only 4 of these be lit up? Now that I think about it, what does anything on their cards even mean? What are these stars? Do they only get a limited amount of special ability uses and that's what these represent? Anyways, they return to the past where they redo the robot basketball competition, and now that Jeremy knows it's coming, Kiwi 2 dodges the little projectile and wins the basketball game. Herb storms off without even saying GG, and Odd says he's a bad sport, but Yumi says he's alright and has a kinda nice side, alluding to his help throughout this episode. Episode 21 is one of my favorites from the season, as it really shows the sacrifice the kids have to make for Lyoko, as well as one of Xana's craziest plans yet. We see Ulrich leads the soccer team into the championship game, which is a big point of tension for Ulrich since his family will be watching. Apparently, Ulrich's father is really hard on him and expects nothing but success and perfection. This pressure is so hard on Ulrich that when they learn Xana's messing with gravity through the electromagnetic fields, he tells the others to go on without him because he has to play in the championship game. 
I've had multiple friends tell me this was one of the episodes that stood out the most to them as kids, and that it was pretty scary and disturbing to just see a soccer game get interrupted by gravity. Like, could you imagine that happening in the real world? Also, I really love this shot of the crowd watching. It looks like a shot out of Smiling Friends or something. Jeremy calls Ulrich and tells him he needs to save the science teacher, as she's the only one left in the building, which will soon be launched into space, and he's the only one who can save her. Seeing Ulrich debate saving her for the soccer game is pretty interesting, because it really goes to show just how much this means to Ulrich and his family dynamic, which I've never really considered before this episode. So Ulrich fakes an injury on this slide tackle, giving him an excuse to run off the field, and honestly, I think Ulrich has perfected this move, like PSG is up the street, they could use an expert flopper. Inside the school is really cool, because when it's rotated on its side, the hallways of the school become these long deadly pits they could fall down, which I've never considered before. Back at the soccer game, we see the other team take a penalty kick, but the kid floats into the air as we see all the players and fans begin to fly off into the sky. Ulrich hangs on to his parents for dear life, and Ulrich's father tells him goodbye and that he's proud of him before flying off, which is so sad and dark. Like, yes, they return to the past a second later, but it's gotta be pretty traumatizing to watch your parents fly to their imminent death. Essentially, the Kodoyoko gang lives their daily lives waking up from really bad nightmares, except it's real, or at least was real. But but yeah, this is one of my favorite episodes of the season, because it had really high stakes and a really cool Xana power here, but I love seeing more of Ulrich's family and his inner strengths and weaknesses, what he'll fight for or risk the world for, besides Aelita. Because as we know, the Lyoko crew is willing to risk the safety of those around them, if not the world, to save Aelita, which can be pretty dark and disturbing to think about, and we see Ulrich really debate here whether to save his science teacher or win the soccer game. I think the gravity turning off is pretty funny, because it's such a shock shocking visual, and I feel like a lot of kids think about that. Like, oh my gosh, what if gravity turned off right now and just scare themselves? This episode starts with the class learning y equals ax plus b for the 20th time in the show, and at this point, this has to be a running joke in the series. Ulrich's pretty tired of his repetitive cycle of school and Lyoko, and worries his feelings for Yumi aren't reciprocated. We see him the next day talking to Emily, which angers Yumi because she says she's not jealous, but it's weird Ulrich does this because she's his girlfriend. Which is pretty crazy, because Yumi, you can't just puppy guard Ulrich like that. Sissy notices the tension between Ulrich and Yumi, and tells Yumi that Ulrich and Emily have been secretly dating for a couple months, which Sissy hopes will drive a wedge between Yumi and Ulrich and allow her to actually step in and date Ulrich instead. The crew wonders what Xana's up to because of their increased tension throughout this episode, and it's actually really funny because Xana essentially wins by doing absolutely nothing, and they blame their emotions and tension on Xana. Like, I'm having a bad day must be Xana. Well, Xana actually does something here, but it's not really impacting the real world, but just more, if you die in the game, you die for real. Which is a pretty good twist to add to the stakes of Lyoko. We see Ulrich save Yumi from falling here, and they share a moment about to kiss when Aelita enters the tower. Like, Aelita, the one time you could actually walk slower. We have people about to die and you hardly remember your left foot from your right, but everything's going good and you just decide to run now? Back in the new present, we see Ulrich talking to Emily when Sissy tries to convince Yumi Ulrich and Emily have been dating. But now that Ulrich and Yumi have shared these moments together in this episode, we see they're confident and secure enough for Ulrich to talk to people without either of them panicking. So it's a pretty cool episode because once again, the stakes of the episode aren't really impacting the fate of the world as much as they are just the Lyoko crew and their emotions. And as I've mentioned, these don't reset when they win, so it's always pretty satisfying to see their further developments and their friendships and relationships, even though we return to a point in the timeline we've already seen. In episode 23, Odd brings his crush to school, a girl named Samantha, who quite literally is a girl that goes to another school. And in case you were wondering, they're still learning Y equals MX plus B, just in case they forgot from any other episode. Sam tries to steal a powerful laptop because she needs a computer strong enough to make her own music, which is pretty funny to think about, since technology has advanced so far in 20 years. Which also makes me think, what kind of black magic is Jeremy using to be able to access Lyoko on a laptop, let alone any any kind of computer from the early 2000s. Jim walks in and sees Odd with the laptop, believing he was trying to steal this, and Odd doesn't really have any alibi, since his only other option would be to accuse Sam, which would also expose sneaking her on the campus. Xana somehow hacks the foundation of the school, causing the entire campus to sink, which is a pretty wild hack compared to some of the other more simple hacks, like mice or hornets. I feel like Xana's attack makes more sense when there's something electrical to hack, like I still can't really tell you how Xana just hacked 
attacks the ground. In Lyoko, Yumi gets devirtualized, and Aelita protects herself by creating a rock barrier around her, which she's been using a lot more in the second half of this season. It's kind of funny, because Aelita basically just becomes an earthbender now, and I've heard she becomes a lot more powerful in future seasons, but I guess we'll just have to see. Yumi, Ulrich, and Odd all get devirtualized here, which I've made note of for the final counter of who gets devirtualized the most, and Aelita's able to enter the tower, sending them all back to before the school was collapsing. Really the only people outside of Lyoko that we really see impacted in this episode are Odd's friend Samantha and my goat Jim who gets stuck in a closet, soon to drown slash suffocate from the mud filling the building. When we return to the start of the episode, the significant change here is that Odd introduces Samantha to his friends as opposed to hiding her, and they show her what they can do with a good computer as opposed to stealing one. Not a very complex episode, but it spends a lot of time in Lyoko, so if that's an aspect of the show you like more, you'll probably enjoy this episode a lot more than I can do justice for in a summary of. Episode 24 starts with Odd not listening to Jeremy's commands and just blitzing in at the monsters. But as usual, Odd is just kind of a beast and takes out all three of these block monsters. Which not only annoys Jeremy, but Yumi and Ulrich when Odd says to leave the monsters to the real pros. But honestly, if we're talking about who's the most powerful Lyoko warrior, my pick's gotta be Odd. He's got a projectile, he's really acrobatic, he's got random cat powers and can claw onto walls and stuff, and he can see into the future. They return to the past, and this episode is extremely psychological and is a little hard to follow, but in a good way. As we watch two different Jeremys enter science class, Class, one where Jeremy secretly communicates with the crew who's missing from the class, praising their success on the mission, and then we quickly cut to another where Jeremy's in the same class with the others, still upset at Odd who is present now. Yumi tells Ulrich that her teacher seemed to glitch for a second, and she thinks Xana must be behind whatever's going on, and to keep an eye out. Aelita tells Jeremy she needs his help finding the newly activated tower, and although they can't locate their friends, Jeremy needs to go to the lab. Aelita also reveals she can hack into the school network, similar to Xana, which could have been really useful throughout the show so far, if she ever felt like telling anyone this. This is useful here, because Jeremy's being interrogated by the school for where his missing friends are, which Jeremy needs to get to the bottom of. We cut to the cafeteria, where Odd makes fun of Sissy for wearing yellow, and like, I hate yellow as much as the next guy, bottom tier cover, but I guess if anyone can make this comment on the fashion in this show, it's Odd, like, his fit goes crazy. And the fact that his hair is not only color coordinated, but that he can style the purple streak into a perfect diamond every day is next level. Jeremy discovers there's some kind of alternate dimension created by Xana that he modeled after the school, which explains where the rest of the Lyoko warriors are. So this Jeremy that's interacting with Yumi, Ulrich, and Odd is actually controlled by Xana. So now we have both Jeremys in this dimension, and the Xana Jeremy sends a zombie Jim after the real Jeremy. Yumi finds out her parents are actually just glitched versions of themselves, and they realize they need to go to Lyoko to stop this. Yumi insists they don't bring Jeremy because she doesn't trust him, and we see the real Jeremy outrun the zombies of Jim, Nicholas, and Herb, which is kind of crazy, considering that Jeremy runs until nightfall, like, Jeremy's whole shtick is that he's a total shut-in with no athleticism. So to outrun the phys ed teacher of all people is really funny, but kind of fitting when you consider the memes of, like, the strongest gym teacher versus the weakest janitor. Like, how often do you see an actually fit physical education teacher? Teacher. The Lyoko warriors debate which Jeremy's the real one, and they learn which Jeremy's real because the Xana one insists Jeremy would be far too scared to digitally teleport to this alternate dimension, but Jeremy's friends know although he's easily frightened, Jeremy would take the risk for his friends. I find this so interesting because it not only gives us insight on Jeremy, but on Xana and his limited knowledge of how the world actually works. It really characterizes this enemy we only see as a faceless digital entity, and to see that it has an imperfect understanding understanding of how the world actually works and makes mistakes too is so cool to see. So the Jeremy Xana just straight up becomes a demon and begins choking Jeremy with wires and even tells Jeremy he's gonna die. <laughs> Which again, is pretty far for a kid's show, and seems to be the closest we've gotten to actually seeing or hearing Xana. is able to destroy this force field that's holding the alternate dimension, and we see the Lyoko warriors are freed from the digital prison, and Jeremy's sent back to the real world. The episode ends with the group back in Lyoko, surrounded by monsters, which they now feel is a piece of cake in comparison, and we close with a wide shot of the crew, fearlessly diving in to destroy this giant horde of monsters, possibly indicating the warriors have gotten a lot 
stronger since before we've seen them lose to like these monsters one on one, let alone 30 on 3. Overall, a really cool episode that highlights the more psychological aspects of the show and really showcases some of the psychological anime influences that went into the creation of Code Lyoko. One funny thing before I move on is this comment that points out you can tell they're not in the real world because there's more equations on the board than y equals ax plus b, which is so funny. I feel so reassured to know there's people like me who love to just hyper fixate on pointless background details. Like the Albert Einstein poster, which if you're wondering, isn't shown in this episode. So they maybe missed a good opportunity to have the Einstein poster with the tongue out in one dimension and no tongue in the other. Maybe that's why it changes randomly episode to episode. In episode 25, the Lyoko crew begins making arrangements for Aelita to enter the real world, with Yumi convincing her parents to let her pen pal Aelita live with them temporarily. It's kind of funny Yumi tells her parents Aelita's last name is Lyoko, and they ask if she's Japanese, which she probably would be considering the word is a spinoff of the Japanese word Ryoko, and considering the fact that Yumi's Japanese makes this a subtle nod to the origins of the show. Odd and Ulrich have a meeting with the principal about getting Odd's cousin Aelita enrolled in the school, and Odd tells him she's from Holland, and I don't think Aelita sounds very Dutch. Jim is really skeptical of the Lyoko crew, telling them he knows they're hiding something and they always have some kind of plan, even confronting Jeremy in the hallway. And how are you going to pride yourself on being a gym teacher if you let Jeremy of all people break your ankles? Speaking of breaking ankles, Jeremy falls down the stairs trying to outrun Jim and falls down the stairs, which causes him to get injured. And as a result, Jim gets fired for injuring a student. Jeremy tells Jim that if he decides to help them, he'll let Jim in on their secret and help Jim get his job back. When I first saw this scene, I almost didn't really care because I figured, well, they're all going to return to the past by the end of the episode anyways, so no one will even remember this and Jim will have his job back on account of being back in the past. So Jim actually brings Jeremy to the Lyoko hideout and we even see him cheering on Ulrich as he shoots back the lasers of the mega tank protecting the tower Aelita's in. And in a really surprising twist, the episode ends not with them going back to the past, but with Aelita materializing into the real world, finally after 25 episodes. There is this irony that Jeremy turned his waifu from 3D to 2D, and checking on the comments about the equation on the board, I've come to realize they really materialized Aelita before they solved the equation, which is pretty insane. So I was really shocked to see that this episode ended not with them going back to the past, Jim in on their secret, and most importantly of all, Aelita is now in the real world, in two dimensions. So let's move on to the final episode of season one and see how this all plays out. In episode 26, we see Aelita finally on Earth, which is pretty amazing to see. They discuss now that Aelita has materialized, they can deactivate Lyoko and Xana, which makes Aelita nervous in case this doesn't work out. But Jeremy takes her hand, asking her to trust him. When Jeremy turns the power off, Aelita faints, and they quickly turn the power back on, trying to investigate why this happened to Aelita. They learn that Xana infected Aelita with some kind of virus, so if they ended up destroying Xana, it would mutually destroy Aelita as well. In the real world, we see the little crawling monster from Lyoko, but in real life, aka in 2D, which is really funny, I love the way it looks here. It actually translates really well into a 2D design. Ulrich runs away from them as he gets shot in the back, which makes me wonder how much this actually hurts in real life. And in the lab, it's really funny to see Jim lives here now, and he's just chasing these little monsters around with a metal pipe, and they even run away from him. Like, Jim could be Lyoko's strongest warrior. This episode is chaotic and all the right ways, with Jim, or Jimbo as he insists friends should call him, fights along all the monsters, getting shot while protecting the journalism girls, while Ulrich and Yumi protect Aelita, who's constantly running away through the ice world here. They realize the only way to stop the destruction of the real world would be to send Aelita back to Lyoko, and Jeremy reluctantly goes back to the past. They learn that the virus is still inside Aelita, and she can never be truly materialized until they find some kind of antivirus, so bringing Aelita to the real world will only cause the chaos from Lyoko to make itself present again. So while it is a little disappointing Aelita can't stay in the real world, it's nice to see the progress they've made in materializing her, as well as finding
finally seeing her in 2D, which was really cool. When they return to the past, they're at the point where Jim, not Jimbo, confronts the group, asking what they're scheming. And when the principal reprimands Jim for this, the Lyoko group pays Jim back by telling the principal they were working on a prank on Nicholas and Herb. So Jeremy actually fulfills his side of their agreement by getting Jim his job back. And the episode ends with Jeremy keeping a photo of him and Aida, which didn't get lost to the past as the four friends walk out together. It's a really sweet, feel-good ending to the season, and while some of these episodes didn't really appeal to me with the Monster of the Week format, I'd like to think that this second half of season 1 definitely strayed a lot further from this aspect, with a lot more psychological episodes, or episodes that focused a lot more on their relationships with each other. I sometimes say, I love Code Lyoko, hold the Lyoko, which isn't really the most fair or accurate thing, you know, like I don't hate the fights in Lyoko, but I guess I say that more to just emphasize how surprised I am that I love the relationships between these characters and their friendship, and they just vibe, you know? They're just so chill sometimes. So with season one being over, let's see who died the most! And before I get into that, I just wanted to give a quick thanks to my Patreon supporters, Jack C, Paul H, and Page67, and I also wanted to thank Buggy and PK Kirby for your Kofi contributions. Thank you so much, it really helps me a lot, and I really appreciate it. So the devirtualization count was a lot closer than I thought it would be, with Yumi devirtualizing the most at 10 times, Odd dying 9 times, and Ulrich was the safest with only 7 devirtualizations. But if you consider the fact that Odd's in Lyoko way more than the others, especially just by himself, you can argue he has a better percentage or has killed more monsters, but in order to preserve what's left of my sanity, I think now's a great time to wrap up the end of this video. So tell me your favorite Code Lyoko characters and episodes in the comment below, I'd love to hear because my favorite episode has got to be episode 21, Zero Gravity Zone. I love the stakes and the concept of what if gravity, but gone. But also, seeing how seriously Ulrich takes the judgment of his family, even as far as staking it over the safety of his peers, if not the world, and it just created a lot of really tense dramatic moments. Plus seeing all the soccer was pretty fun. Alright, I'll talk to you next week. Bye!